Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. For those wanting to nerd out, we got official confirmation from not a Tesla app when it comes to the sentry mode efficiency improvements. The way it was before, the vehicle's cameras were connected to the FSD computer, which itself connects to the MCU or the media control unit, which is finally connected to the USB ports. And because of that interconnection, that entire chain had to stay on when sentry mode was turned on. And the video footage had to be streamed from the FSD computer into the MCU where processes like motion detection would occur. And then that data had to be compressed before being written to the USB drive. But going forward, Tesla is shifting the responsibilities of the vehicle computers. It sounds like the FSD computer will now be responsible for the motion detection and the compression, which means Tesla can keep the MCU asleep. The MCU is still required to push the video to the USB drive, but Tesla can now wake up the system only when it's needed. So in short, going forward, the MCU will not be continuously powered on to analyze and compress video. So far, this has only rolled out to the Cybertruck, but a source did confirm this will be coming to other Tesla models as well. Just to get it out of the way, this is a new ad from Jaguar. Yes, the vehicle company. And this is what I mean when I say Tesla's competition is lost. Elon replied to the post and said, do you sell cars? As you might expect, Jaguar is getting roasted in the comments. And heading to their website, you'll see the exact same theme. No pictures of any vehicles anywhere. The slogan, we're here to delete ordinary, to go bold, to copy nothing. So many things I could say about this one, but for now, I'll just say, we'll see how this pans out. Eola Hughes from Row Motion, who we had the privilege of having on the channel a while back, shared a next post saying, best system prices have fallen below $100 per kilowatt hour for the first time in China on the back of record low LFP sell price. This is a chart worth understanding. The bar on the left is the dollars per kilowatt hour price for US made modules and systems using Chinese cells, which has an average cost of $240 per kilowatt hour. Then over on the right, you see the Chinese made cell module and system sitting at $82 per kilowatt hour. And to go from US made to China made, you can see the differences in where those cost savings come from. A big one in pink, they highlight Chinese players are minimizing margin to gain market share. And they call out the most significant saving is due to vertical integration when it comes to the actual cost of the cells. We'll see what Tesla chooses to do when it comes to pricing of the Megapack out of the Shanghai Megapactory sometime in quarter one, but all indications are that the cost of goods sold for the Megapack out of Shanghai is going to be significantly lower than the ones out of Lathrop. Finally, months later, police are getting involved when it comes to the protests against Tesla's expansion at Giga Berlin. Police are now clearing that camp of protesters. I think it shows that all means are being tried here to push us away from this place, which is actually pointless because we say that what they're planning here is of no use to anyone. It's simply for the profit of Tesla, of Elon Musk, of capitalism, and for that, the forest is being destroyed. It's just wild to me that these people really believe Tesla is the company to protest of all the companies out there. I don't want to read too far into this, but Tesla Manufacturing did share on X the Giga Small House over at Giga Berlin. It's solely powered by the Sun and Powerwall 3. 
It's basically just a small display room to highlight the entire Tesla ecosystem. But I still imagine a world maybe 5, 10, 15 years from now when Tesla has hundreds of billions of dollars in cash where they can actually make something like a small house, perhaps in partnership with some other contracting companies. Essentially where this small house display turns into a real world product. Something to keep in mind, the economic minister of Brandenburg, Jörg Steinbach, said that he would not be willing to congratulate Elon on a Trump victory, calling the win highly problematic in saying he has directly argued with Elon in recent months. There was some more political back and forth, I'll have the article linked below, but the main point is that Jörg did say Tesla is still looking to expand its facility in Grünheide in the coming months. But Jörg did say that he's been arguing intensively with Elon over the past few months, so we'll see how that expansion goes and if Elon changes any plans. I'm sure most of you saw all of the videos from Kim Kardashian with Optimus and the Cybercab from last night. I was hoping to wait a bit to uncover what was going on and to get more insight into the situation, but there's remarkably little information out yet. All we know is that Elon and Kim did have a conversation back at the Met Gala in 2022. Elon is aware of the videos as he reposted this one on X. Replying to that, Ashok said, looks like that robot's not coming back. And then the Optimus account said, sorry, you had to find out this way. And honestly, it's very hard to tell if they're joking or being serious or both. And yes, we all have the same questions. Is this being teleoperated? Is it doing this autonomously? Is this at Kim's house? In this one, why is there a gold Optimus? Apparently it's one of one sitting in the Tesla Cybercab. Kim was praising the design of the Cybercab and then Franz replied saying, thanks Kim K, amazing team, more to come. Certainly more questions than answers right now, but it feels like there might be something going on here and we'll get an announcement in the weeks or months ahead. Either way, I'll definitely have my eyes open. Trump has chosen his new transportation secretary and it's not Emil Michael as the reporting was yesterday. It's going to be Sean Duffy. Here's what he said about autonomy six years ago. Uh, reality is catching up with movies like Blade Runner, Demolition Man, Minority Report. We are seeing the capabilities of fully autonomous vehicles being tested in cities like San Francisco, Miami, Pittsburgh, and, and more. Auto insurance policies have already been impacted by AVs. For instance, we already have level two and level three AVs on the road. Manufacturers like Tesla are already employing adaptive cruise control technology, which uh, lets you take your hands off the wheel for a lengthened period of time. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that uh, are somewhat resistant to entrusting their lives with autonomous vehicles. And there's others who just wanna drive. But at the end of the day, safety will be the top concern before the public is ready to fully trust AVs. We have seen the reaction from both industry and the public to recent accidents and how it has altered views on how ready this technology is from uh, and for being deployed. There are others ready for the change. Senior citizens are the perfect demographic for AVs. The oldest among us are clamoring for this new technology. They don't want to drive any more than we want to be behind a Cadillac going 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. If you talk to millennials, their generation, they don't even own cars. Uh, they like public transportation. They think of Uber and Lyft also as public transportation. And at the corporate level, Uber SUVs and uh, Uber Black are how executives get around town. These ride-sharing companies are also looking at employing fleets of fully autonomous vehicles. This technology uh, can be remarkable in keeping our families and our kids safe. In Wisconsin, uh, some of you might have heard, there's a big investment from Foxconn. They're looking to work with the Wisconsin DOT to create AV dedicated lanes to drive over 4,000 employees to their jobs at the company's plant. All of a sudden, transportation to and from work could be uh, a perk of the job. Autonomous vehicles, they're coming. What I hope to find out today is how insurers are looking at AVs in terms uh, of insurability. Will auto manufacturers and tech companies uh, developing the driving systems, will they retain liability for damage? Will specialized products be developed uh, within the industry? How will data be shared uh, for risk assessment? 
Given how optimistic Sean was on autonomous vehicles six years ago, I think that bodes well for what we're about to see in the months ahead. And the CEO of the Autonomous Vehicle Industry Association Group said it's imperative a federal policy framework on AVs be put in place so the US can lead on this critical tech in the 21st century. There's not a lot out there on Sean, but he has made comments that may signal support for a bipartisan right to repair law. And we've talked about in the past how that's actually been a pretty big story line for Tesla over the years and they've developed a lot in that area so we'll see what happens here. Duffy still needs to be confirmed by the Senate, but the truth is right now, the way I see it, there really has never been more positive momentum behind autonomous vehicles than there is right now. And with Tesla's version 13 series right around the corner, it may be time to get your popcorn ready. The FTC recently issued a stern warning to automakers stating it's begun to look much more closely at the data being collected from these smart vehicles. We also heard the attorney general in Texas filed a lawsuit against GM alleging that they were collecting and selling driver data to insurance companies without the consumer's consent. The lawsuit claims the data of about 1.8 million drivers in Texas has been sold at a profit to third-party brokers. Many people don't know that just a phone number can be used Used by these data brokers to uncover much more information like your social security number, your address, email, and family details. Duke actually put out a research report on the topic and they said data brokers are openly and explicitly advertising data for sale on US individuals sensitive demographic information. I think you get the point, I just want all of you to be aware of what's going on. But not to fear, there is an easy way out of this nonsense and that's signing up for Delete Me, the sponsor of this video. It's an American-based company that's been specializing in personal online data removal from the endless incoming stream of new data brokers. Delete Me will save you hundreds of hours over time by calling and requesting that your personal data is removed from the thousands of data brokers out there. You get quarterly reports showing you the status of your removal at every data broker and you can see exactly how many broker listings have been reviewed. So if you agree that these companies should not be making a profit by selling your personal information which makes you and your family more susceptible to all of these scams, this is an easy way to take your privacy back. You can head to joindeleteme.com slash electrified to get 20% off using my code electrified linked below or by using the QR code on the screen. The Tesla China weekly number came in at 17,100 and that's back to back weeks above 17,000. Comparing it to week seven in quarter three, that number was 14,300. So quarter over quarter is effectively flat, down 0.12%. Week seven of quarter four last year came in at 16,300. And so year over year, Tesla China is now up 19.46%. If they want to set a new record quarter, they would have to average just over 16,233 units per week. But perhaps one of the more exciting takeaways, there were 7,200 Model 3s delivered, which was the second highest number since they did the refresh. This number has been quite volatile so far this quarter. There's been more batching than usual, but could it be that Tesla is switching some of the Model Y lines over to Project Juniper? That's just speculation on my part based on all of the breadcrumbs we've seen over the past few months. But given some incentive extensions over in China, there's a real chance Tesla sets a another record quarter in quarter four. Figure shared an update on its partnership with BMW saying Figure 2 is now an autonomous fleet operating the end-to-end -end use case 400% faster with a seven times higher success rate. Figure is committed to shipping millions of robots to companies and homes worldwide. Every now and then, a Wall Street analyst will say something about Tesla and it's accurate and it makes sense. This is one of those examples. Is it going to be uh, a different regulatory landscape for autonomous vehicles or is it going to be taking away uh, that, that tax credit? What's going to matter more? Yeah, it's going to be giving uh, less regulatory restrictions 
on robo taxis, definitely. Uh, federal restrictions was one of the big reasons why GM uh, stopped making its origin uh, purpose built vehicle, right? That allows you to make a vehicle without pedals and steering wheels. So you need that federal deregulation, if you were to call it a policy framework, in order to allow for that. And that's what the Tesla Cybercab is. If you look at autonomy and AI, et cetera, that comes at a much higher multiple. You have a trillion plus dollar market cap for Tesla. Is Are you going to get there with an auto business for selling more cars or through AI autonomy, right? So autonomy is the way they can justify that market cap more they can from selling cars. You know, my robotaxi valuation is 44% of my whole price target. Mm. FSD is 33%, right? So like the, the sky, not the sky's the limit, but but you get the idea, right? Like we're talking about huge multiples, and so, so that deregulation, I'm not surprised. If you believe in robo taxis, you do believe in autonomy. FSD, if you believe in it, um, having deregulation kind of sets everything in motion to achieve what this company wants to achieve. Tesla Charging said you can now tap on the supercharger pin to see if there are trailer compatible stalls. If your vehicle is in trailer mode, trailer friendly supercharger locations appear at the top of the list. While Jaguar is hyper-focused on not copying anyone and doing whatever it is they're doing, BYD is actually copying Tesla. BYD is now working on its own self-driving chip after other companies like Neo, Xpeng, and Tesla have done the same. They're touting a power of 80 tops or tera operations per second. If you wanted to compare it loosely to Tesla's hardware or AI4, that's 50 tops per chip, but remember there's two on each vehicle. And that's for redundancy, so if you wanted to be technical, you could say a Tesla vehicle has 100 tops of compute power with AI4. But the hope is that this in-house developed chip from BYD will start to go into models within two to three years. Until then, BYD will continue to use chips from NVIDIA. But much later in the future, BYD does plan to have its in-house developed chip in all of its vehicles. Tesla has a new retail partnership in Australia, similar to how they've been working with Best Buy here in the States. The Powerwall 3, wall connect connector and mobile connector will now be sold at these Bunnings warehouse locations. Tesla stock closed the day at $346 flat, up 2.14%, while the Nasdaq was up 1.04%, and the volume was 12% below the average. Remember, it's looking like this week and next week I'll only be able to upload one more video. You can see yesterday's video if you missed what's going on. Don't forget, check out Delete Me linked below, take advantage of that discount. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video. Video. If you did, you can find me on X linked below, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.